Meta AI just came out with Sapiens, which is an AI model that can be used for human pose estimation, body part segmentation, depth estimation, and 3D reconstruction using normal estimation. These building blocks will get us one step closer to materializing the metaverse. Whether it's meeting your friends or playing your favorite sport in the metaverse, things like post estimation and 3D reconstruction will be critical for creating a realistic experience. In this video, I'll be talking about human post estimation, body part segmentation, depth estimation, 3D reconstruction or normal estimation, synthetic data training, and some of the challenges that we see with the Sapiens model. If you want to learn AI and machine learning, check out my website at kevinwoodrobotics.com. There's a 15% welcome discount code going on right now. So human post estimation, you can see here, there's different key points. So I'm going to go through three types that's available right now. So here is the 17 key points one. So you have the nose, left eye, right eye, left ear, right ear, left shoulder, right shoulder, left elbow, right elbow, left wrist, right wrist, the left, right hip, left, right knee, and the left, right ankles. So you can see these are the main key points for the 17 key point estimation. Now here is the 133 key points. So for this one, they break it down into 17 for the body, 6 for the feet, 68 for the face, and 42 for the hands. So one thing to notice is that for the 133 key points, the reason why there's a lot of emphasis on the face and the hands is because typically the facial expression is probably one of the most important part, especially for virtual reality, especially the different expressions that someone makes. It really makes or breaks the overall uh, experience that someone has. And with the hands, a lot of times you'll do different things, especially with gaming, uh, things like that, or if you wanted to interact with the screen, so different motions of each finger. So you can imagine each finger here has four key points. So you need a lot of that information of how the fingers move if you want to do certain motions that could mean different interactions with your computer if you're interacting with a virtual computer, for example. And here is the 308 key points that they came up with. So what they ended up doing was on the face, they end up using 243 key points. So much more detailed than the previous that we looked at here, which was only 68 for the face. So they went all the way up to 243, which is about four times more information. And you can imagine all of these key points will bring a lot of detail to the expressions that people make. So Again, that's one of the main reasons why I think they put so much emphasis on the number of key points on the face, especially. So if you look in detail here, they have a lot around the eyes, as well as the eyebrows. You can see the eyebrows alone have a bunch of points. And the mouth, too, has a very dense area. And those are all the key parts that really show the expressions. So here are some examples that we can take a look at on how they perform on different people. So I'm just going to go through a few different slides here so you could take a look. This one is of a little boy here. This one is a girl, a woman. And here is a couple. So you can see how it interacts when there's a slight bit of occlusion, not too much, but you can see a lot of features on the face and ears here. And here's another one with three different people. You can see it's very interesting that even if the hair is covered, it could detect where the ears might have been. So it does some guessing over there. And then here's a few more examples. So body part segmentation. So with the body part segmentation, what we're dealing with is 28 classes. So they base it off of the Goliath, which has 34 classes, but they took out six, six classes. So the chair, eyeglass frame, eyeglass lenses, headset, lower spandex, and visible badge. They took out those six classes, and that's where we get the 28. So this leaves us with background, apparel, face, neck, hair, left foot, uh, left hand, left lower arm, left lower leg, left shoe, left sock, left upper arm, left upper leg, lower clothing, and all the right equivalent. And then you have the torso, upper clothing, then lower lip, upper lip, lower teeth, upper teeth, and the tongue. So those are your 28 classes. Now here, let's take a look at some examples here. So you can see all of the different regions are segmented by different colors. So that helps visualize the different regions more easily. And you can see that overall it does a pretty good job in these test cases that we see here. 
even when here you have they have uh, special props going on and it still does a pretty good job. And even in different lightings, you can see there's a light in the background. So it does very well depending on the different features. So now we're going to talk about depth estimation. So the core idea with depth estimation is uh, previously, um, before all the mono depth estimation came out, you typically needed two cameras. So you have a left you have a left and right camera, and you're looking at some scene. So the idea is for each picture that the two sets of camera takes, you're going to have two pixels that correspond to each other, which might be some distance away, and that's called a disparity. So after you find the distance between every pixel, you get the disparity map, or also known as a depth map, and that is what you see on the right here in the colors. So once you have the depth map, you could use some formulas to find the actual depth using this formula FB over the delta here. So once you do that, uh, you could find out your actual depth using this equation. So here you can see some more examples. You can see that it even picks up the fine detail of the hair here, which is pretty cool. Um, this is more examples of the same people that we saw earlier, but now we're looking at the depth map. You can see at the tips of the hair, it seems to have a little bit of challenge, but overall I would say it does a pretty good job here. And then here it does a comparison with depth anything. This is the large model. And you can see that um, in some areas it tends to have a little bit more detail, especially on this uh, third row, you can see some difference there. Okay, now so for 3D reconstruction, they also call it the normal estimation. So the idea of this is a concept in geometry where if you have a normal vector, you're essentially describing a plane. So if you do this to many little patches of planes, which could end up describing the surface of a human, then the idea is if you could estimate the normal for every patch, then you could figure out the surface of the person. So that's the general concept with normal estimation. So they use these colors to show the rendering of the people. But in practice, if you were to throw it in a VR, you would actually um, overlay it with realistic coloring over this. But the reason why they're not doing that is if they did do that, then it would just look like a 2D image. So they end up using this like purple, um, purple and like bluish type coloring to let you visualize the 3D model. So here you can see the reconstruction of the surface for the people. And this would be very cool if we could see it in 3D. But you can see overall that um, it does a very good job. This one here does some comparison with the different types of models that are out there. So here you can see that the Sapiens, this is with the 1 billion parameter, tends to do, do, do a much better job, especially if you look at the, the other two methods out there. You can see there tends to be a lot of noise going on, whereas the Sapiens it does a good job smoothing out the surface. So usually the noise will happen. What, what usually causes that is if you have like normal vectors that are like crisscrossing, then you end up having like surfaces that you know have a convex area. So the idea is if you have a bunch of surface normals that are like continuous, then you would have a smooth surface. So most of this that's happening is I think the normals are not very uh, the gradient of the normals is not very smooth. So that's what's causing all of that. So I want to talk a little bit about the synthetic data training. So the idea with synthetic data training is that it's very hard to get all of this data and the ground truth um, from realistic people. So the idea is they supplement this with synthetic data because if you have a model, it's very easy to get it in your rendering system, the actual normals as well as the depth. So here you can see, if you look closely, you could tell that this is fake. But at a glance, you may think it's pretty real because I think even though this is synthetic data, it's real enough to be used to train the Sapiens model. So you can see a few more examples here. This one you could tell a little bit more that is fake, but it's good enough for some of the training that they end up ended up doing. Okay, and I want to cover some of the challenges that they currently face. So one, some of the challenges that with complex poses, like this girl doing a yoga pose here, it may be pretty hard. Uh, crowding and occlusion might be some other challenges. So, 
But overall, I would say this model, Sapiens, is very good, and it's going to set the foundation for a lot of future uh, development for Meta. Okay, if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.